Harris Academy, and I am also an international and award-winning speaker on Pinterest marketing. And the reason that I teach Pinterest is not because it's this hot new platform that everyone's talking about. That's definitely a cool incentive, but I actually teach Pinterest because I personally use it within my businesses to generate thousands of visitors and thousands of dollars in sales in my own personal businesses each and every month. And I want to start out just by really honoring all of you because, you know, a lot of people do not like to embrace change. In fact, a lot of people will do everything they possibly can to avoid something new and something that forces them to learn a new skill. So I think the fact that you're all here today to learn about Pinterest really speaks volume about the type of dynamic people you are that are choosing to educate themselves and go after new opportunities. And for that, I really commend you. I've put together a great presentation for everyone. I'm super excited to get started, but I just want to encourage you to go ahead and maybe close your email, turn your phone on vibrate, because I'm going to be moving through this information quickly so I can you know, give you guys the most amount of value in the shortest amount of time. I know all of you have very, very valuable schedules, very hectic schedules, so I don't want to take too much of your time, and I really want to make sure that I really serve you in this next hour together. So as I said, I will be taking questions at the end of this presentation. So if something does come up, make sure to write it down off to the side because I wouldn't want you to be busy typing in the chat box and mix, miss something really important that I'm going over in the presentation. So that being said, I hope you're all ready. Maybe have a glass of water, but definitely a pen and a notepad or however you choose to take down information because we're gonna be covering some really great stuff including how you can use Pinterest to drive traffic, even improve your SEO, and get more customers. So that's enough about me. I kind of want to know more about you. How about those of you that are here, why don't you type in the question box right now. On a scale of 1 to 10, how well do you currently feel you understand how to use Pinterest for your business? 1 being not at all, and 10 being I completely understand how to use Pinterest for your business. Go ahead and type that in the question box right now so I can get a better feel for our audience. Okay, looks like Randy's at a one, Derek's saying five. We've got a lot of ones. <laughs> Thomas is at a negative three. Okay, Thomas, we're gonna teach you a lot of new things tonight. Okay, lots of twos. So it looks like most of you are on the lower end of the spectrum, which is awesome. That just means I'm gonna be able to really take you from zero to 60 and learning how to use Pinterest effectively for your business. So just one more question before we get started. Why don't you type a yes or a no if you currently have a Pinterest account that you're using? Does anyone have a Pinterest account? Type yes or no. Okay, so it looks like a lot of you do. I see quite a few no's, but a ton of you are telling me that yes, you do have a Pinterest account, um, but maybe you're just not totally clear on how to use it for business. So that's exactly what we're gonna be going over in tonight's presentation. And I really want to make sure that you guys understand all this information. So if you do have questions, like I said, just write it off to the side and we will definitely um, have a portion at the end where I can answer those for you. So what are you going to learn on tonight's presentation? Well, I'm going to be going over with you specific strategies to get you the biggest amount of impact in the shortest amount of time. I'm also going to be addressing the biggest myths and misunderstandings when it comes to Pinterest. And I'm also going to show you what most people are do doing totally wrong when it comes to using Pinterest for their business so you don't make those same mistakes. I'm going to be sharing a cool trick with you how you can successfully integrate your Facebook and your Pinterest marketing. And I've even got a very special surprise bonus for you at the end of the presentation. So make sure you stick around because I wouldn't want you to miss out. So for those of you that are new to Pinterest, you're not using Pinterest, just real briefly, let me explain what it is and how it works. So Pinterest is a virtual pin board that helps you organize and share interesting things that you find online. Think of it as a virtual version of maybe that bulletin or that cork board that you have sitting above your desk right now. And the way that it works is that people pin images from other sites onto Pinterest where then other people can then repin those same images onto their boards. That's what makes it a social network, is not only are you pulling inspiration, but you're able to see what's inspiring other people, and you're also to share what you're finding useful or interesting in terms of information and images. 
But even that being said, you know, why as a business owner should you be paying attention to Pinterest and specifically why right now? Well, first of all, I want you to know that Pinterest is extremely viral. In fact, over 80% of pins are actually repins. Now you can compare that to Twitter where less than 5% of tweets are actually retweets which means your exposure can basically go on autopilot for you. If you're the one that's creating new content, you've got the majority of other people on Pinterest just circulating it for you. And due to its simple visual nature, people are clicking through to sites more, which is why it's becoming such an excellent traffic referral source. I'm sure some of you can attest when you're on Pinterest, it's very streamlined, it's very simple. There's not a bunch of chat boxes or ads or notifications popping up. It really allows you to focus and fully attend to the information or the image in front of you. And I personally believe that's why it drives traffic so well. But what's very exciting is we are amidst the Pinterest gold rush. There are truly just a few months to get in and start leveraging Pinterest for your business before the major wave of businesses come in and start adapting Pinterest marketing. So those of you that are here tonight and are going to be hearing this information, you really have an opportunity to go in and start using it right now while there's very little to no competition. And it's really gonna position you as a leader in your industry. Hardly anyone thinks that they understand how to use Pinterest for business. And I guarantee you by the end of this presentation, you will know more about how to use Pinterest for your business than 99% of the population. But I want to thank you because you're also helping me out today. You see, my personal mission and my true passion is to create more successful entrepreneurs. So I honor you and I thank you so much for being here and giving me that gift too. So let's look real quickly at what the experts are saying about Pinterest. Well, they had 10 million unique visitors faster than any other independent website in history. And Pinterest is now driving more traffic to websites than YouTube, Google Plus, and LinkedIn combined. In fact, it's now driving more traffic than Twitter. And I just recently read a report that shared that Pinterest is now driving more traffic than Bing. Pinterest is driving more traffic than a search engine. Very, very powerful. And there's also over 10 million Facebook connected users. And I want you to go ahead and type in your question box a yes or a no if you've ever seen any Pinterest activity on Facebook. Maybe you've seen it on your news feed or on a friend or family member's profile. How many of you have seen Pinterest activity on Facebook? Tons of you, okay, wonderful. So this is showing you that you have an opportunity to seamlessly integrate two of social media's largest and hottest platforms. And some very, very important news to share with you, research has just reported that Pinterest is generating more revenue per click than Facebook or Twitter. In fact, the Wall Street Journal just recently published that Pinterest users are nearly twice as likely to purchase than Facebook users. This is really important for you to understand because I'm gonna be going over some information like this that is proving to you Pinterest is the social media platform that we have been waiting for as business owners. It drives crazy traffic and that traffic actually converts. I've heard so many leaders and experts telling us how exciting it is that this Pinterest opportunity has appeared because a lot of us are kind of frustrated with social media, but Pinterest is making more and more sense as business owners, and I'm gonna be showing you exactly the strategies you need to get the same results that even I'm personally getting within my business. So let's face it, I am a small business owner just like all of you or many of you on this call tonight, and I totally get it. You're running your own business, you already have way too much on your plate, and the last thing, the absolute last thing you want is another social media time suck. But I also personally understand how frustrating it can be to not have enough customers and to not have enough sales. I mean, you should have more customers. You already have a great product or a great service. All you need is a better way to get in front of more people. And as business owners, I work with thousands of business owners across the world in my school called the Entrepreneurs Academy. And every time I bring up social media, all I get back is people feeling overwhelmed and frustrated. You know, there's so many platforms now, there's so many conflicting strategies. Most of us as business owners, 
we're just really overwhelmed by social media. So I want to go ahead and see if that's the true for all of you here today. Will you type in your question box, yes or no, do you feel overwhelmed by social media? Okay, so a lot of you are saying yes, one or two no's, good for you. But yeah, most of us, I know I personally do, there's definitely days where I feel like I've got so many accounts to keep up and I'm just really overwhelmed by social media. And many of you might feel like you just don't get Pinterest. Maybe you've logged on, you've clicked around, or you're using it even for you know, personal use, but you don't really understand how you would use it for a business, right? You know, you've clicked around, you just don't see what all the buzz is. You've heard about it from everyone, everyone's talking about Pinterest, but you yourself don't really understand what the whole, what, is all, what it's all about and how it would make sense in your marketing strategy. Well, I'm going to be addressing all of these challenges today in this presentation. Because I want to share a little personal story with you. About a year ago, this was me. I was totally frustrated. I had just started my second online business, which was a home decor business, but I wasn't happy with the level of success. And in fact, my brand had been on Good Morning America, it had been on the Nate Brooke Show on NBC, we'd even been featured in national publications like New York Magazine. But I was getting spikes, but no real consistent stream of quality traffic. And that's what you need to make a business successful. You have to have that way to get exposure. So I was very frustrated, but something happened that actually changed the way I looked at Pinterest. I was completely skeptical about using Pinterest for my business. I was trying to ignore it. I just didn't want to pay attention to it or take on another platform. But I had a bit of a breakthrough that took me totally by surprise. You guys want to hear about the breakthrough? Yes or no? Let me know if you want to hear about the breakthrough that happened to me. Okay. So here was my breakthrough. I woke up one morning and I had a few more orders than usual in my inbox. I didn't really pay much attention to it, went on with my day. But the next morning, there were even more orders. It was unbelievable. So I went and logged into my Google Analytics and you can imagine, I was totally shocked to see that Pinterest started referring a lot of traffic to my site. In fact, it had become one of the top 10 traffic sources for my website. And I can't take any credit. I wasn't even doing anything. But what this did is it forced me to pay attention to Pinterest because I saw if I'm already getting traffic and I'm not even really using it at all to market my businesses, I'm not fostering it, I can only imagine the results I could get if I took my background in online marketing, I took my experience as being an online entrepreneur for the past four years, and I started researching and testing and learning everything I could about how to use Pinterest to drive traffic and market my business. And the results were phenomenal. Pinterest is now my site's number one traffic resource and it sends thousands of new visitors and thousands of dollars in sales to my website each and every month. Really powerful stuff, you guys. I mean, I want you to imagine logging into your Google Analytics account and seeing a huge and consistent spike in the traffic to your site next week. Picture checking your bank account and for once finally seeing more money coming in than going out. It's a pretty cool feeling. That's the type of stuff I want to show you how to do tonight. And I want you to imagine the next time someone asks you, hey man, you know, how's business? To be able to say amazing and for it actually to be true. So that being said, I would like to teach you my two-part strategy that I've used to get these incredible results with Pinterest for my own business. Would you all like to learn this two-part strategy that I use? It's got proven results, so I think you could find it very valuable. Okay, perfect. So a lot of you are saying yes, wow, thank you, absolutely, perfect. Let's go ahead and jump right in. The first thing that I want you to do, and please make sure you write this down, is you have got to add the pin it button to your website. It's super easy to do. You just go to Pinterest.com. They give you the code, and you can just put this anywhere you want on your site. This particular blogger has the pin it button all over her site. She gets over 6,000 visits a day just from Pinterest. And this pin it button can be anywhere. It could be on the header of your site. Um, I want to show you an example of a realtor who uses Pinterest. He's got the Pinterest button in the top header of his site, and that links to his Pinterest account but he also includes the pin it, or basically the social media share button, below each one of his listings. 
So I want you to think about adding the pin and button to your product pages, to your blog posts, basically anywhere on your website that you want that information shared. Because what's really cool is that when other people pin something from your site, it doesn't just show to them. What happens is when someone pins something from your site, it then shows to all of their followers, everyone that is choosing to follow them, it could be hundreds or thousands of people. When they choose to pin something, all of their followers will see on their newsfeed what they have pinned. So it's a great way to get residual exposure across thousands of new people. And I wanna teach you a cool trick. Make sure you write this down. You can actually go to pinterest.com forward slash source forward slash whatever your domain name is. So Luxury Monograms is the name of my home decor business I was telling you about that I'm using Pinterest to market. So you wanna actually go to pinterest.com forward slash source forward slash whatever your domain name is, and you can actually see what is constantly being pinned from your site. Now this is invaluable market research because it's telling you what people are really responding to and engaging with, but it also shows you specifically with Pinterest what type of content people are choosing to share on that platform. So make sure you write this down, this URL at the top of the screen. You wanna go back and check that all the time, it's constantly updating. So now let's jump right into part two of my strategy. So you've gotten the pin it button all over your website, so you're encouraging other people to pin your content for you. But now I want you to actually go and create a Pinterest account for your business. And research shows us that people like brands better and are even more likely to buy after viewing their Pinterest pages. So I wanna walk you through how you would actually set up your account properly, because here's the deal. You know on Facebook you have a personal account and you have a business page. Well, Pinterest only has one type of an account. So when you're setting it for business, it can be a little confusing. So I wanna walk you guys through this. Now, first of all, when you click settings and you go to edit your profile, you'll see this first and name field right here. Now, this is where you actually wanna put your business name because that is what is going to appear top front and center on your Pinterest account. So make sure that maybe you're a personal based brand and it makes sense to put your first and last name there. But for most of us, we're gonna actually wanna consciously put in the name of our business and not just our personal name. In addition, you're gonna choose your username. This is what's gonna be your URL, your unique URL, pinterest.com forward slash whatever your username is. So most likely you want it to be your brand name. But what I really wanna to talk to you about is this about area. This is one of the most missed opportunities I see so many business owners passing over. This about section, you have 200 characters and you want it in a very direct and concise manner, talk about and share very directly what your business, what your service is so people clearly understand. Remember, clarity in marketing is everything. So you wanna be very clear and direct about who you are, what you do, why it's of value. So you can see, I've explained very simply, you know, what luxury monograms is, but I've also included keywords. And I'm gonna be going over a couple different strategies for using Pinterest to optimize your SEO or your search engine optimization. And this is one of them. You want to be using Pinterest to create backlinks and one of the opportunities to, is to actually include keywords in this about area. So make sure you're writing that down to use all your full 200 characters and plug in your keywords in this about section. In addition, if you are a location-based business, I know sometimes we have a lot of realtors on these training calls, you wanna make sure to actually type in your location here, plug in your website, put your URL, because it's actually there's a little button that will link to it at the top of your profile, but choose a fantastic image, very important. Not only is this image gonna be on the top of your profile, like your profile picture on Facebook, but it's also going to follow you and be everywhere you post. Every time you repin something, every time you comment or like something. So you want this to be either a great headshot, a fantastic, colorful, eye-catching logo, or even just a really great high-quality image of a product picture. So this is gonna be, it doesn't really matter what it is, just make sure it's eye-catching and it's high-quality and professional looking. You don't want some grainy screenshot of yourself or one of your products. You want this to be a really professional, high quality image. Okay, so is everyone with me? Is this making sense? Are you starting to kind of see how you would go ahead and start? I right, see so we have a lot of questions coming in. I wanna go ahead and remind you, we will be doing a Q&A at the end of this presentation so I can get to everyone's information and questions at the end. So please, if you have questions, make a note of them off to the side. I will ask them at the end. 
Um, a lot of people are asking about recording. We are recording this. As long as there's no technical errors, we will definitely try and send it out to you, but you never know what's going to happen. So make sure that you're writing down as much information as you can while you're here live. So here's the little trick I promised you about how to integrate your Pinterest and Facebook marketing. So here's the deal. Currently, you can hook up a Pinterest account to a personal Facebook account. So you have a personal account that you want to hook it up to. Awesome. You can do that. And the reason that's great, it kind of helps you to build your followers because it will actually publish on your timeline your Pinterest activity, what you're pinning, what you're commenting on. But the problem is most of us don't use our personal Facebook account for business, right? We use our business page. So most people are stumped about how to, you know, market their Pinterest presence on their Facebook page. But here's the solution. All you have to do is go to woobox.com forward slash Pinterest. And literally within the click of a button, you can get a Pinterest tab for your Facebook page. And this is so cool because you probably already spent a lot of time and energy building up your engagement and your audience on your Facebook page. And there's no reason you should have to start from scratch on Pinterest. So adding this great tab just allows some of your fans that are already currently engaging and posting and commenting on your page to see that you're also on Pinterest. And it's very cool when you click this and you're on Facebook, it actually opens up your Pinterest profile inside of Facebook. So while you're still on the platform and they can see all the different boards, they can click on the boards and see all the different individual pins, which is very cool. But as soon as they try to repin or comment, that's when they'll be taken to the Pinterest platform but a great way to leverage and integrate your Pinterest and your Facebook marketing. So now I want to talk to you about a key strategy that really changed everything for me, and that was to pin my own original content. For those of you that were here when we started, I talked about that over 80% of pins are repins. So that gives you an option here. You can either just get on Pinterest and repin a bunch of stuff like everyone else, or you can create your own original content, whether it's pinned from your site, like blog posts or videos. But if you add original content, you're then that 20% of people who's adding to the content on Pinterest instead of just circulating what's already on there. And I have to say, as a business owner, that is your fast track to success with Pinterest. You want to pin things that you can have link to your site to build your SEO, to get backlinks, and also to drive more traffic because truly, we don't just want them, we don't just want your followers hanging out on Pinterest. We want them to get to your site so they can comment on your blog post, sign up for your newsletter, buy your products, check out your services. So what's very cool about original content is you can actually link wherever you want. You can go in and edit your pins and change where it links to. Did you guys know that? Go ahead and type in the question box right now. If you knew that you can actually change where a pin links to. Did you know that? Yeah, so some of you did, a lot of you didn't. You absolutely can. You can go and change where a pin links to. And now I see one person was asking, they're like, oh, you shouldn't do that. That's not true. Here's the deal. If it is your own original content, you can choose to have things link wherever you want. It is true you shouldn't go and change links if it's someone else's pin or their content, but you can absolutely 100%, you own your own material and you can choose to link it wherever you want. In fact, did you guys know that you can actually upload things from your computer to pin? You don't even, you're not even just restricted to pinning things that are hosted online. You can actually upload a photo or a chart or a graph. You can upload things from your computer and pin them. All you have to do to do that is click this add button when you're on the Pinterest, when you're on your Pinterest account or on the Pinterest homepage, and you'll just choose to upload it from wherever it is on your computer. But I want to really encourage you, please pay attention to this. After you have done that, you must, must, must go in and add a link. Because here's the thing, when you upload something from your computer, it's, it doesn't link anywhere, right? Pinterest doesn't know where you got that from. So what happens, maybe some of you have seen this, is it'll just kind of say, instead of on the bottom where it normally says the website that's been pinned from, it'll just say uploaded by user which is super lame because people probably want to click through and see more information about that or learn more about that photo or whatever you've pinned. So you wanna always make sure to actually edit a link, all you have to do is hover over the pin and edit box will appear in the top left, you just click that and this light box will appear. And then all you have to do is just go in and type the URL, wherever you would like it to link to. You can link to an opt-in page, to a blog post, to a product page, whatever you'd like. 
So it's very easy, and this is also a great strategy for your original content. When you are even pinning something from your site, like a blog post or something, and you choose that you actually want to send that traffic somewhere else, you are more than welcome to change your own links to your content and choose to link it more strategically. Is that pretty cool? Are you guys enjoying this information? Okay, awesome, good. So are you guys ready for me to move on, learn more cool stuff? Wonderful, okay. So let's talk about the top five types of pins. Because as I talked about, really the key to being successful as a business owner with Pinterest is to create your own original content, right? Create the content that the other 80% of people are gonna be circulating for you. But the key to successful Pinterest marketing, and really the biggest myth about Pinterest is that it's only for product-based businesses, that service-based businesses can't leverage it, which is totally false. The key to successful Pinterest marketing is to take information and to make it visual. And I know that might be a little confusing, so I've gone ahead and created five different types of ways to take information and make it visual that is both serving to product and service-based businesses. The first way, and I wanna make sure you write this down, is with infographics. And infographics are an awesome type of content to be pinning because they provide value, they establish credibility, and they also allow you to build a relationship with your followers or with your potential customers. I mean, I want you to think about the law of reciprocity. The more you give to someone, the more they wanna give back to you. So if you can start sharing information that maybe you're privy to because you're in that industry, but the common person isn't aware of, you can count on the fact that they're gonna feel like you're really helping them out, that they're really learning and valuing and benefiting from you. So the next time that they maybe choose to list their home or go to buy a home, you can bet they're gonna follow and choose a realtor that's already been providing tons of great information and services in terms of useful content to them. I love this pin that a realtor created and it shares what renovations have the best resale value. How cool is that? You can see this has over 115 repins. And tons of, you know, here's another thing. A lot of people say, well, I heard that Pinterest is only for businesses and crafts or cooking or fashion. That is totally not true. I mean, in the UK, the hottest form, the most popular form of content is social media and business advice. And I am currently seeing hundreds of new types of businesses in a variety of industry every day come onto Pinterest and start utilizing it and getting incredible results. You just have to learn to think outside the box. That's what I'm gonna help you do today. So look at this great social I've got a secret strategy to share with you today. When you are creating your own original content, whether it be an infographic or something else, you want to try and make your pins tall. You want them to have a high pixel height. And I want you to take a peek at this chart I have right here. This shows the correlation between the average amount of repins a pin gets and the image height in pixels. And can you see this? How cool is this? You can see how drastically the amount of repins increases when the image height is over 800. Something to pay attention to. So make a little note to yourself off to the side, try and make my pins tall. And that should be easy with something like an infographic because infographics are normally already a lot taller than they are wider. Pretty cool, did you guys know that trick about making tall pins? Let me know in the chat box, yes or no, did you know the trick and how drastically the height of a pin can affect the amount of repins you get? Awesome, you guys are all saying no. Perfect, I love, I love teaching you new stuff. Good, are you guys enjoying this information? Are you learning some cool things? Perfect, okay, let's keep going then. So the second idea I have for you, how to take information and make it visual, is to create tutorials. And again, this is an awesome opportunity for both product and service businesses. In fact, research shows us that tutorial pins see a 42% higher click-through rate. Higher click-through rate, higher traffic. Exactly what we're after with Pinterest here. So I want you to think as a product-based business, how could you create an image tutorial of either how to use your product or some cool ideas for a way to use your product, or for a service business, what could you teach someone how to do in a tutorial pin? You can see this great image tutorial for makeup, this incredible image tutorial for different types of fitness, uh, moves and exercise training you can do. There should be a lot of different things. If you are a service-based business, in most cases, you are a wealth of knowledge, especially to the common person. 
So think about what information you get asked a lot or some even some FAQs for both product or service based businesses. What do people commonly ask you about that relates to your business and how could you create some sort of tutorial content to put on Pinterest that responds to that. And the third idea I have for you is useful information and how to's and most people are completely mistaken and they believe that it's really pretty pictures that are successful on Pinterest. And nine times out of 10, it's not pretty pictures, but it's useful information that people repin and share and click through to sites more. It's useful, not pretty information, which is great for us business owners. But I wanna show you something. So most business owners, if they choose to you know, pin one of their blog posts, they pin an image on the blog post and they put in the caption area what the blog post is about. But here's the thing, most people are gonna look at your image first and then decide if they wanna read your caption. So you can see if someone glanced at this picture, I honestly, my first impression is that it would be something kind of, you know, maybe religiously based. I don't know. It doesn't exactly speak Facebook to me. And here's the deal. When someone repins one of your pins, they can clear out your caption area. So then you've got this random image kind of floating around. It's probably not going to generate a ton of traffic for you because nobody really understands what it's about. But what you can do is actually add text overlay to your images. So say you have a blog post and you pin this, you know, you decide you want to pin the post. Instead of just pinning this post directly, I want you to think about taking that image, just using some basic image software like Photoshop or even something like PicMonkey, a free software online, adding just the main takeaway, the main benefit that you're going to be teaching in that post. Even plug in your URL or put, you know, your logo attached to it. That way, not only are people so much more, you know, clearly, and this is so much more compelling about the benefit, about what they're going to learn when they click through, but you now have a lot more control over your image and control over the way people perceive and understand what that post is about. Pretty cool. Does that make sense to everyone? So don't just pin a picture, but take the time. I've showed you how to actually upload something from your computer, so you could still create this image on Photoshop or whatever basic image software you want. There's tons of it. Um, and then upload it from your computer, go in and add the link to that specific blog post. And make sure you do link to that blog post because there's nothing more annoying than posting about a particular message or a particular piece of information and then linking to a main general page of your website. That's just gonna irritate people. I hate when people do that. So do make sure if you're advertising or you're trying to really promote a, a particular post that you make sure your link that you add in there when you edit your pin is the exact link to that post. Pretty good, everyone enjoying this? Okay, good. Getting lots of great feedback. Yvonne's saying great tip. Michael says very good. Um, Anthony is saying yes. Debbie says super. Okay, thanks you guys. I really hope you're enjoying this information. You can see how it could really assist you. So a couple more examples of those how-to images I was talking to you about. Look at just the simple way people are combining a picture and just a little bit of text. And you can see 133 repins. Or something great like this, adding kind of a banner with some text over some really colorful, eye-catching images. These are the real keys to being successful on Pinterest. These little subtle tweaks, like the height, like adding text to images that no one else is doing and that is going to make you a Pinterest power player. And hopefully you can see, do you guys see how this could actually be kind of fun? I mean, this is actually, using Pinterest for business can actually be kind of fun. I know there's a lot of marketing and business stuff you have to do day to day that you don't really enjoy. I want you to understand, I get emails from my clients all the time that are like, I can't believe how much fun I'm having with my Pinterest marketing. This is so cool. So I want you to see that same opportunity. Okay, good. I'm glad you guys do. So let's keep going. The fourth idea I have for you is you can actually pin videos from YouTube. Did you guys know that? Type yes or no if you knew that, that you can actually pin videos directly from YouTube onto Pinterest. Yeah, a lot of people don't know that. I'm always surprised to hear that. And it's very, very easy. All you have to do is get the little pin it button. You can just go to Pinterest under the about section and you drag this little pin it button to your browser and it just creates like a little bookmark. And when you're on YouTube, if you're on your YouTube channel or someone else's, all you have to do is click pin it and you can within seconds pin videos onto Pinterest. And this is so cool. You can see when you pin a video, Pinterest automatically adds this big, bold, black and white play button, which just really grabs people's attention. In fact, Hollywood's, the, film, the Hollywood's film studio, Lionsgate, 
went from 200,000 to over 400,000 views in just five days by pinning their content. There's almost 20 million users on Pinterest right now. And the best way to really increase your amount of views on YouTube to either optimize your channel or just to add great information to your Pinterest account is to pin videos. We all love videos and Pinterest in particular has very few videos, but you can see on the main homepage of Pinterest, videos is one of the main categories. So if you already have content on YouTube or if you could very easily make some videos, and I want to tell you, even if you're not comfortable being in front of the camera, you could very easily put together a PowerPoint just like I'm doing with you right now and record yourself actually going through a PowerPoint teaching something or sharing some case studies of your clients. You could also use something like ScreenFlow and record yourself doing things on your screen, creating tutorials on your screen. So there's lots of ways to actually create video content that is very, very powerful on Pinterest. And fifth and finally, results and testimonials. I think Pinterest has a great opportunity to create kind of social proof for you of your business and your services. And a great way is to include results. You can see these great fitness trainers, how that she's actually created day one and day 10, the drastic visual results, or before and after. I mean, maybe you, you know, really help people drive a lot of traffic to their site. Imagine if you could do kind of a similar before and after image like this and show a snapshot of one of your client's Google Analytics account before they used you and six months after using you and show the results you get for your clients and for your customers. And in addition, testimonials. I mean, testimonials are so powerful in marketing. Imagine something I do for my business consulting Pinterest page is I actually take screenshots when people post on our Facebook page and talk about great results they've gotten or what's really helped them that I've done. And I created a whole board on Pinterest with screenshots of all the great testimonials from blog posts, from our members forum, or from our actual Facebook page. So I want you to think about that. You could even pin video testimonials. So lots of great ideas to take information in the terms of social proof and put that on Pinterest. And here's a little secret traffic referral trick for you. I'm kind of mixing these in. If you add a call to action in your pin, a call to action meaning telling someone exactly what you want them to do, like click here or repin this, adding a call to action either in your image or in your caption increases engagement by 80%. This is huge, you guys. I mean, if this doesn't get you excited, I don't know what will. You can increase engagement by 80% by including a call to action. And I always encourage you to put it in your captions, but something that I've personally been testing and getting amazing results with is actually creating something that looks like a button in the middle of the image of my pin. So you know how on Pinterest, the way that you actually go to, you click through is to click the image and it takes you to where that source link is on the back end. So if you actually create something that looks like they're supposed to click it in the image, 80% increase in engagement. And engagement means likes, repins, comments, whatever you're telling them to do. So that is a very cool trick, so write that down, to actually add an image of a button inside the image of your pin. Is this cool stuff? You guys still liking this? Wonderful, okay. Yeah, you guys know how powerful call to actions are. So now I wanna talk about captions because the image is really only part of the whole equation of your pin. What you wanna do is also optimize the caption area of your pin. And you heard me mention the first way to do that is to include your call to action. So make sure on all of your original content to tell people what you want them to do. Do you want them to click here? Do you want them to repin this? Do you want them to comment below? Tell them what you want them to do. And additionally, add keywords. I literally have thousands of backlinks from Pinterest to my site simply by making sure I'm always including keywords in the captions of my pins. And you can see these keywords right here are these words with the hashtags, these little grid marks. Now, you don't have to have a hashtag in order to get that backlink, but what's cool is when you do use hashtags, Pinterest hyperlinks it. So if you click this while you're on the platform, they will pull up all of the search results with that hashtag. So it's just kind of a cool user navigation trick that a lot of people are starting to adapt. So think about actually using keywords. This is going to enable more people to find you on Pinterest, but it's also going to provide you with backlinks for your site, which is the biggest struggle when you're trying to search engine optimize your website. And at a price. Okay, let me know, type in the, in the chat box right now, how many of you know how to add a price to a pin? Yes or no? Do you know how to add a price? 
Okay, so we're seeing a lot of no's actually. A few yeses, but a few no's. I am seeing, you know, still some questions coming in. I do see your questions. I can't get to them right now, but we will be taking questions at the end of the presentation. So just make a note of it and we'll get to that at the end and I'll answer all those questions. So I want to show you all of you how to add a price. It's actually surprisingly simple. All you have to do is type in the dollar sign and the numeric value. You see that right there, the dollar sign and the value. And Pinterest automatically slaps on this great banner on the top left of your page. Very, very eye-catching. You can see research is showing us that pins with prices actually get 36% more likes, which is really cool. But what's also neat is when you do add a price to the caption of your pin, you also get added under their gifts area. So those of you that have products or services that make great gifts, that is a great way to get in front of even more people and get more exposure because people can actually search by price range for gifts on Pinterest. So you definitely wanna be thinking about that. And last but certainly not least is adding a link to your caption. Did you guys know that all you have to do is type in the URL and you can actually add a link to your caption. Pinterest will hyperlink it, you just type the URL and you can click and it'll take you exactly where that link goes which is really great because again, another traffic referral trick. That's what we're trying to get people to do. Not just hang out on your Pinterest page, but actually get them to your site where we can capture information, build the relationship and serve them further. Okay, so did everyone get those four components down for killer captions, call to action, keywords, price and link? No one is doing this, you guys. You're gonna blow people away by doing these strategies. So I wanna go ahead and look at a few case studies before we jump into the Q&A, because I really think, I don't know about you guys, but I always learn best by kind of seeing what other people are doing, how they're using it to market it, and letting that inspire me to adapt it to my own business. So there's this great brand on Pinterest right now called Birchbox, it's a cosmetics company, they sell makeup. But what they've done is they've actually created their own channel on Pinterest, essentially just by creating a board, titling it Birchbox TV, and choosing to only pin videos to this board. So they could choose to also pin other stuff, but they kind of make it feel like a channel by just having videos on this board. And you can see they've got over 9,000 followers on this board. People love useful video on Pinterest. And what I love is that they demonstrate tons of product usage, instructional, and ideas. So not only do they teach you how to use their products, but they also give you tons of cool ideas. So you can see maybe you didn't need that nail polish, but oh my gosh, I just learned how to do a polka dot manicure. Now I have to have that nail polish. So this is a great idea for those of you in product-based businesses to both instruct and provide inspiration about your products. And those of you service-based providers, this is a great way to add value and to position yourself either by direct to camera, um, you know, talking, sharing, teaching, or like I said, by actually filming things, cool things you could teach people to do that relates to your service industry. So a very cool idea to actually create a TV channel for yourself on Pinterest. And I wanted to show you a kind of non-traditional case study as well, because I know some of the examples I'm giving you, you know, still fit into that kind of female-oriented box, but you have to believe me when I tell you, there are so many opportunities for even surprising businesses and not the cookie cutter niches to get tons of exposure and customers from Pinterest. So I wanted to share this case study with you with, of HubSpot. Now HubSpot is an all-in-one marketing software, very male-dominated, but marketing online software. But they've been very successful and I actually love the way they structure their boards because you can see they have a whole board that's all of their blog posts. Kind of a cool way you can click that, peruse all their posts at a glance. They've got a board that promotes all of their webinars. Super cool. They can drive traffic to opt-in pages, to registration pages. They've even got a whole board of their eBooks, which is very, very cool, very high value. They um, link these again to opt-in forms where you have to give them your information. They send you this great eBook. So a great way you can pin, if you guys have eBooks, you can pin eBooks. They're promoting conferences, sharing marketing infographics, um, lots of cool behind the scenes, really promoting their company culture, lots of great ways and lots of great ideas for how you could use Pinterest as kind of a non, um, kind of an unorthodox type of business. You know, maybe you're not in fashion or cooking, but you're in software or finance or real estate. Let me tell you, there are tons of opportunities for you to leverage Pinterest as well. So let's go over a brief recap. I know we've covered a lot of material. I really hope it served you. 
we talked about what you need to do first and foremost if you only do one thing from this presentation is you need to add the pin it button to your site you also want to go ahead and after you've created a Pinterest account, install a Pinterest tab on your Facebook page so you have additional ways to grow your follower base and you don't have to start from scratch. And then when you are choosing to start pinning and adding content to your page, try as much as possible to create your own original content for Pinterest and link strategically. And I want to encourage you when you are thinking about original content, Focus on pinning useful information like videos, infographics, tutorials, and how-tos. And then don't forget about your captions. I'm sure some of you have seen those captions that just have like a little period. Pinterest requires you to write something, so take advantage of the opportunity and differentiate yourself. Create captions with call to actions, keywords, prices, and links. So now I've got a choice to offer you, and the choice that you make as business owners is very, very important, so I hope you pay attention. You can either stick to what you're currently doing and hope that just Pinterest goes away. <laughs> but I have to warn you, if you keep doing the same thing, you're only going to keep getting the same results. But you have a second choice. You can choose to embrace this revolutionary new social media platform and learn the most effective systems and strategies and start getting quality and consistent exposure for your business today. Hopefully you see now why Pinterest is the social media platform and the opportunity that we have been waiting for as business owners. So I've got a little shortcut to offer you. I have created a course that is going to easily get you better results even faster because I wanted to give you all a shortcut. So what I did is I packaged together all of the best practices, the most effective strategies into a course called the Power of Pinning that's video courses all hosted online, so you can literally log in from anywhere, whenever you want, as many times as you want, you have lifetime access, and you can learn how to quickly and easily create incredible results for yourself with Pinterest. And this product works so well because it's comprehensive, but I keep everything very, very simple. It includes step-by-step -step tutorials so that you are never confused or overwhelmed by what you need to do. I'm literally handing you a shortcut that is going to avoid you having to figure all of this out on your own, and it's going to save you a ton of time. I mean, it literally took me months of research and years of online marketing strategy experience to be able to put together this course. But also, more importantly, it's going to save you from making all of the mistakes that most people are making with Pinterest. So let's just take a quick peek inside. The first module is all video tutorials walking you through how to actually join and set up your account. The second module is going to be showing you exactly what is this new world of social media that Pinterest is presenting to us and why should your business really be on it. I'm going to be teaching you ideas and specific strategies to create the most powerful pins and walking you through case studies of how other businesses are using Pinterest, including their best ideas and practices from other brands. If you enjoy the case studies I shared with you today about HubSpot and Birchbox, you're going to love module four. Module five teaches you about branding. How can you can specifically use Pinterest to create raving fans and customers and use your page to connect and tell your story. Module six will teach you whether you already have an audience or you have no audience, how you can quickly get lots of followers on Pinterest. And the seventh and final module will teach you how to measure your results, how to track your best pins and create a strategy. So I wanna let you know, I've had thousands of people go through this training, literally thousands of them. And when I asked them around what they thought I should offer this course for, a lot of people told me right around $300. But here's the deal, as I told you, we are amidst the Pinterest gold rush, literally a few months to start leveraging Pinterest before all of the competition floods the market. So it was really important to me to get this training in as many business owners' hands as possible. So I came to my team and I decided on the price of $197, a price I feel really, really good about, and I know that it's gonna create a ton of value for people far beyond that price point. But as I promised you at the beginning of this call, I've got a special deal for you. Because you have taken an hour out of your day, I know how hard that is to do. Believe me, I do. I want to give all of you the opportunity to take advantage of this seven-module Pinterest training for just $97 today.